Anesthesia record keeping dates back to records generated by Dr. E. A. Codman and Dr. Harvey Cushing in 1894. These records, reported to have been initiated as a contest between the two physicians, were to serve as a means for the two to improve their practice and avoid complications. By 1934, Dr. E. I. McKesson determined that it is difficult for one person to count the pulse and respiration, measure the blood pressure and the volume of breathing, to determine the volume of rebreathing or the quantity of carbon dioxide used, to note the dosage and a few other factors in their proper sequence and with sufficient frequency to aid in the administration. McKesson developed an electronic device to aid the anesthetist in the task of record keeping. Despite Dr. McKesson's efforts, electronic means of recording data during an anesthetic did not take precedent over the handwritten chart. By the 1970s, Electronic devices for recording patient variables began to appear and gain widespread acceptance. With the advent of such devices, research into the accuracy of record keeping practices began to reveal some discrepancies. Electronic devices record each value generated, often recording erroneous values or artifacts. Such recording of false values led to fears of litigation of those using electronic methods of record keeping. Early studies of accuracy also revealed the tendency of anesthesia providers to purposefully alter the vital signs recorded on a handwritten chart in an effort to make the record look smooth. The practice of smoothing has been a source of significant debate, calling for the acceptance of computerized systems in order to enhance accuracy. Enthusiasm for computerized record keeping was renewed in the mid-1980s with the adoption of standards of patient monitoring during an anesthetic. Proponents claimed that computerized systems would enhance accuracy and completeness, reduce workload, and reduce the time spent in record keeping. Opponents of such systems claimed that the anesthesia record was a tool for conceptually organizing the course of an anesthetic and that a computerized record had the capacity to be formed without ever passing through the consciousness of the anesthesia provider. Additional benefits of computerized record keeping have resulted from customization of the record keeping software or through the creation of large databases of patient information. When properly configured, computerized systems may produce a record that captures essential billing elements and is more complete and legible than comparable handwritten records, particularly when errors of omission occur at times of high workload, such as during induction or emergence. The creation of large electronic databases of patient information for clinical research is a benefit of computerized record keeping systems. Additional benefits include the development of practice models to improve efficiency in patient safety, as well as enhancements in billing practices. Improvements in quality assurance may also be seen, particularly through the elimination of the need for self-reported incidents. Despite many benefits and financial incentives, some aspects of computerized record keeping systems remain controversial. In addition to the potential for the recording of erroneous vital signs, certain systems may have screen displays that do not allow the anesthesia provider an uninterrupted view of recorded vital signs. Failure to ensure the recording of data may lead to exposure to medical legal consequences. Additional research into the efficacy and safety of such systems is still important. Despite conflicting and sometimes controversial evidence regarding the accuracy of the record and vigilance of anesthesia providers, the potential financial rewards of the implementation of computerized record keeping systems may create incentive for widespread adoption. As of 2008, as many as 44% of the academic medical centers in the United States have completed or are in the process of implementing a computerized anesthesia record keeping system. Further financial incentive has been provided by the federal government with the passage of a $19 billion stimulus package in 2009 dedicated to the enhancement of medical technology and electronic record keeping. While there are financial incentives and apparent benefits to the adoption of computerized record keeping systems, researchers should examine differences in the connectedness of practitioners to the patient in order to optimize patient safety.
Good morning, Corey. I'm Lucithia, one of the new locums. Would you like a break? This would be a perfect time for a break. Thank you. Okay, but before you go, I need you to tell me a little bit about this record keeping system. I've been through the orientation, but it's still new to me. Mm -hmm. It's really simple. The computer just pulls all the vital signs. You don't have to do a thing. Really? I don't have to enter anything? Well, there are certain things that you have to put in. You have to put in your fluid volume and your train of four and any of your medication dosage. You've got to put all of those in. But otherwise, it takes all the information from the monitor, from the anesthesia machine, all the ventilator settings, pulls it right into the computer, frees up your hands to do other things. Like with this guy. I had to start a second IV and an art line after he went to sleep. And the whole time this thing kept my record, I didn't have to catch up later. Yeah, I usually try to pay attention while I'm doing things and then write down what I remember after the fact. It's not perfect, but it usually turns out okay. Mm -hmm. And you can always go back to the trend screen of the monitor here and write those things down on your paper chart, but really, who's got time for that? This way, since it collects all the vital signs in real time, you don't have to touch it. If I'm putting in a line or something and can't touch the monitors, I don't get behind. Hmm. That does sound great, but what about artifacts? I mean, when I chart, I smooth over any wild swings in the data, and I clearly only record vital signs that are accurate. Yeah, well, you know, I don't worry too much about that. I mean, personally, I think that the benefits of an, uh, a pretty accurate, legible, and timely record far outweigh any kind of erroneous data that you're going to have here or there. Besides, if it's clearly false, anybody's going to be able to tell that. And you can always use the narrative feature here to kind of type in exactly what was going on at the time, like surgeon leaning into the cuff, advise surgeon to step away, non-invasive blood pressure recycled, you know, that kind of thing. <clears throat> Besides, these things are really pretty accurate, at least as accurate as the monitors themselves. Why did this place decide to go with computerized charting in the first place? I mean, isn't it really expensive? Well, initially it's pretty expensive, but the thing kind of pays for itself. You know, the capture of billing elements that this thing does is really incredible. We could never remember to write down all of those little bitty little disposable charges on the paper charts. This thing records all of that stuff for us. We don't have to do anything at all. Besides, this thing actually covers all the required billing all the hang on a second. All the required billing elements. See, here's a case in point. This weekend, I did a case and I forgot to sign the record. Things like diagnosis and signatures, anything that's missing can be recorded and we get a page or a text message or an email and we can sign all this stuff electronically. The time it takes for us to actually send out a bill has been cut in half. Wow, that's got to create a lot of cost savings. Yeah, and lately we've actually been looking at our practice patterns. Things like, you know, what's the best muscle relaxant to use for a long case? Which one's the most cost effective but still safe and aesthetic? That way, if we get everybody on the same page, we can really save a lot of money. There's even a way that this system can predict outcomes, like which patients are going to get nauseous in the PACU. This way, we can target our treatment to only those patients that are at highest risk, and that way we don't have to give it to everybody, and we save even more money. Hmm. Really, how does it do that? Well, <clears throat> we have databases with this, um, and the databases help us keep a huge record, hundreds and thousands, every single one of these cases go into this database, and we can query those, and it helps us find out things like maybe even predicting uh, post-operative nausea and vomiting. Mm -hmm. That way you can tell us which patients are most likely to have that in the, re in the recovery room. We don't have to treat every single patient, we can just target our treatment to those that really need it. That way we save even more money. It's great for QA and we can even target individual practitioners and that way we can help everybody become more cost effective and safe practitioner. Hmm, sounds like there are lots of benefits. I'm still not convinced I like it though. I mean, don't you feel like you lose a little bit of the connectedness to the case? I mean, when I write things down, I feel like I'm much more in tune with what's going on with the case. Yeah, well, you know, you adapt to that, given time and experience with this method. You know, certainly, I, there's some things that I have to really concentrate on because I'm not writing them down anymore. But I don't think it makes me any less vigilant or any less connected to the case just because I'm not writing it down. Now, how about that break? This guy's a 55-year-old gentleman that's here for a splenectomy.
what I'd like to do is to discuss some benefits and limitations of both manual and computerized record keeping. And I've asked you two to come and share your experiences, both good and bad, with uh, the method of record keeping that you have the most experience with. All right, so first of all, I'd like for you guys to introduce yourselves and share with me your years of experience as a CRNA as well as mm, an approximate years of experience with whichever method of record keeping that uh, you have the most experience with. Okay? Yeah, well, I'm Mike Felicaro. I'm professor and chairman of the Department of Nurse Anesthesia at Virginia Commonwealth University. I'm also a staff anesthetist. I practice at Henrico Doctors Hospital, Parham Campus. Mm -hmm. I've been giving anesthesia for 30 plus years. And uh, uh, until recently, my, uh, the method of charting has always been a paper method of charting for me. My name is Paul Buffon. I'm a nurse anesthetist here at the Virginia Commonwealth University Health System. Mm -hmm. And I've been practicing for the last 12 years. Of those 12 years, the last six have been using computerized charting. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right, well, first question I have for you guys today is, do you see any particular benefit or advantage uh, to your personal practice, the actual care of the anesthetized patient that's offered by the method of record keeping with which you have the most experience? Uh, well, Corey, uh, I think the, the benefit for me is, is just in comfort, uh, my own comfort level in caring for the patient. Uh, again, I'm, you know, I don't mind telling you that I'm 50 plus years old mm -hmm. and that uh, I, you uh, know, uh, I learned computers on my own, and they are, are not uh, second nature for me. You know, I really have to work at them mm -hmm. and, and, and getting involved with technology. And I find myself, when I am using some computerized technology, spending more time trying to figure out the technology, uh, and that takes time away from the patient, time that I could focus on the patient, because I'm just not completely comfortable with technology, where writing to me is second nature where I can actually write and focus more on the patient. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I find that it uh, allows me to have more time with the patient, focusing on what's going on with the patient, mm -hmm. my uh, uh, things that I have to, the tasks that I have to uh, perform on the patient, and not have to worry about uh, writing down things when it's being autom automatically recorded from the monitors to, to the, the computer itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, still considering the care of the anesthetized patient, um, could you share what you consider to be a limitation or a disadvantage of this method of record keeping? Well, sure, uh, Corey. Um, I can tell you a couple of disadvantages that I found myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I gave anesthesia at a time uh, uh, when uh, I would sit with the chart on my lap and one hand on the patient. Mm -hmm. Now I have to divert my attention away from the patient, actually turn my back in most cases to the patient and enter uh, data in on a keyboard. Mm -hmm. um, I do work with graduate students, as, as I know Paul does and yourself. Mm -hmm. And I watch my students sometimes going through the menu screens on the electronic charting. And what I find them doing is it will talk to in areas of machine check and such. They don't have to write anesthesia machine check anymore. And what they do is they go down and they'll hit the button, pop, 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 like that. It, 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 it's almost as if uh, they know what the method is, but, but I can't really say for sure that they actually uh, did what it is uh, they're supposed to do. Uh, uh, they just know what boxes have to be checked. And the second thing is I found myself, uh, and again, the transition now where I am working, they are using electronic charting. When I go to the recovery room, and I'd give report uh, on the patient, you know, I'd have to think what the blood pressure was during the case, where, you know, it's almost as if when you're writing something down, to me anyway, it, it's more of a cognitive connection that I'm writing a number down, I'm going to recall that number more than if some machine is keeping it for me. It's almost like I don't have to think about that anymore mm -hmm. unless an alarm parameter goes off. So I find that my recall is better if I write something down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Paul, do you find uh, that there's a particular limitation or disadvantage of, of manual techniques? Of manual techniques? <laughs> um, similar to what Mike has said, you know, there is um, that connection that you do have through, but I find that doing the automated technique, I am looking up more often and seeing what the blood pressure is, but not having to worry about writing that down. Mm -hmm. um, as far as limitations to the automated system, um, you have to have power wherever you go, which most of the time we do. Uh, an internet connection, which most of the time w it's set up to be that way. Um, the one limitation is that uh, paper chart you can take pretty much everywhere, mm -hmm. whereas the computerized charting, uh, 
you can't take it into an MRI scanner. Mm -hmm. You'd wipe out the whole hard drive, essentially. Mm -hmm. So there are limitations to where you can go with computerized charting, mm -hmm. uh, but there are advances in computerized charting that are kind of making things to go towards that, that we it's getting better with mm -hmm. laptop computers and being able to chart from within uh, an area. Mm -hmm. So, given the choice, uh, which method of record keeping would you prefer? And tell me a little bit about why you'd make that choice. Well, again, I, I think just you know comfort level. I prefer the, the paper charting. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I really would. Uh, from a, 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 an area of recall, mm -hmm. um, I think that it would help me with uh, an area of recall. So, mm -hmm. I would prefer from from that point of view. And plus, I'm able to tailor the chart in such a way that I am sure that what I've put on there is accurately recorded. Where with the computer system that I have used so far, there's a lot of things that are being recorded that are kind of behind the scenes that I'm not sure if they're being recorded. Uh, I don't actually see what the, the chart looks like until it's over. And I'm very concerned that at times during a case, artifact will occur, these other types of, of, of issues that I might not catch. Uh, that could reflect on, on the chart in such a way that uh, uh, I'm not aware of uh, uh, unless I really spend a lot of time at the end of the case going over the chart in detail. So it would save me time not to have to do that if I could record uh, mm -hmm. uh, live. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Paul? I find that uh, automated charting does catch a lot of things that I may have missed is if I was charting manually. Mm -hmm. I do see, like, when I look back at the automated record, sometimes that the blood pressure has come down or the heart rate had gone up, um, where I may have missed that, and then I do see that and correlate what was going on with the patient at certain times. Mm -hmm. So I do find it um, uh, advantageous in that, in that aspect. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, do you feel that uh, your method of record keeping would have any impact on uh, medical legal uh, litigation? Uh, and it, it, would you feel that your method of record keeping would place you at risk or would actually support your position? That's a good question. Uh, you know, first, uh, uh, I think that the best way to, uh, to uh, prevent these types of things or, or the best way to advantage uh, on us this would be to put cameras in the operating room and record and watch everything we do. I think they would defend a good practice uh, more so than uh, uh, than uh, expose us uh, more. Mm -hmm. It would prevent people from reading and doing things they shouldn't be. But from the, uh, from the charting point of view, uh, I get concerned, like I say, uh, that I'm going to miss some type of menu uh, uh, or something that I, I'm unaware of. Uh, so it takes, uh, it, it, the other thing is, if you're practicing in more than one institution and you go to another institution, they may be using an entirely different method of electronic charting where when I write my chart, I write it the same way, even if it's a different form, I'm still writing on it. So I, I'd be concerned for myself that I may miss areas of artifact uh, uh, that some uh, lawyer could point at and say, well, you know, did you notice the heart rate dropped here uh, 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 or, or something along those lines. So I, for me, I, I would be less comfortable uh, defending a electronic record than I would be something I've written myself. Mm -hmm. Paul, what do you think about medical legal medication? I think this has uh, come up a lot with electronic medical records because there is so much data that isn't a chart. Um, and as far as like artifact, um, write a simple note saying what was going on, why you had artifact at that point in time. Whereas there is, some, you know, you are able to smooth more with manual record keeping. Mm -hmm. There may be artifact that was there that's not necessarily documented mm -hmm. um, or an erroneous blood pressure or something. Um, I think that there's a lot of clarity with electronic medical records. Um, you don't have to worry about the handwriting, whose signature it was. It's all done electronic, and you know who was actually in that case at all times, mm -hmm. and who was the, the who are the providers for that case, um, and not having to decipher, you know, what drug was given and the actual entry of what time that drug was given. You have a 15 minute interval and something happens during that interval, but that drug is given sometime in that 15, whereas electronic medical record keeping, it's, it's specific to a certain time and it's locked in at that time. Mm -hmm. So how does the method of record keeping uh, that you have the most experience with uh, affect the process of uh, quality assurance or quality improvement? Um, other things like uh, billing practice or uh, financial incentive. Um, Paul? Uh, I think electronic medical records have greatly improved quality assurance. At least um, 
beginning to pull data and query data to pull up as far as the number of patients that have nausea and vomiting, um, all, uh, any type of outcomes. Um, it's a lot easier to pull um, data from a database as opposed to pulling a thousand charts and manually going through a thousand charts. It's going to save you a lot of time um, in that aspect of having to manually go through a lot of charts. Um, the other aspect, financial aspect, is there is a higher cost up front and the maintenance of that uh, system, but your billing turnaround is greatly improved. Once you have all your check boxes that have been completed for billing, that can go out right to the, um, the insurance payer and the turnaround is a lot quicker. So the bottom line there is that the money's coming back to you to pay for your services sooner mm -hmm. than later. Mm -hmm. which and sometimes uh, a paper chart may be lost mm -hmm. and some electronic medical records do get lost or they just can't be found but the information is there and it's easier to pull that up as opposed to a paper chart that's could be in a circular file somewhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mike, your thoughts? Well I, I agree with Paul uh, in, in, in most of what he said. Um, I think that the, when, I, when I look at or think about electronic record keeping as to why why has this evolved such as it is? It's, it's first of all for clarity, as Paul said. I think you know that we have some folks that have very bad penmanship, and then we're trying to disseminate information between a provider who comes a couple years after they can't read what had occurred. So I, I see for for clarity. Although I don't disagree with Paul that it necessarily records who does what. When I sign into my electronic case, I'm working with a graduate student. Every time they're entering in there, they're entering under my name. Okay, where if they were entering with the, their own pen, you would see their penmanship, a different change in penmanship. So I think that there's some confusion there. Or if an attending comes in and writes something, sometimes they're entering and they're still under my uh, charting name. So uh, there can be some confusion there. Uh, but the other things are uh, uh, the reasons I think electronic charting has become more popular is number one, billing. You're able to capture all these costs. Mm -hmm. And number two, the research aspects. Because now you're able to collect uh, uh, data uh, that you can go back and you can examine and, and you can look at quality, quality outcomes. Uh, so I would agree that that, that that method has advantages in those areas, um, um, notwithstanding the limitations I said earlier. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, well that's good. Um, do you feel that your method of record keeping uh, influences your care of your patients in any way, either positively or negatively? Yeah, absolutely. I think it negatively impacts the way I care for my patients. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, 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 again, I grew up, I don't want to sound like I'm 80 years old here, I, I grew up <laughs> in a time when, you know, uh, when I monitored my patients, where if I wanted to know what the patient's blood pressure was, I listened to the Krakow sounds, I listened to the heart sounds, I felt the pulse, I touched the patient to see if they were warm, if they were diaphoretic, I checked the eye signs, and now what I find my graduate students doing is monitoring the monitors. The patient even, they're not even looking at the patient, and this is just another piece of technology that now has to be attended to that takes attention away from the patient. They are constantly typing, entering, constantly typing and entering. You know, again, I was taught where we put the chart right at the patient's head, right next to their head on the operating room table. So you're here and you're looking, you're, you're watching, and you can stop instantaneously. Where now I see people dialing knobs, going through buttons, entering data. You know, and, and so I, I get concerned that it takes attention away from the patient. It does in my case. But again, I admit I have not as comfortable with technology and you know I, I, I'd like to say that you know I'm, I'll be 55 years old uh, and I am much closer to the mean age of nurse anesthetists out there which is around 49 years old mm -hmm. as opposed to folks at the lower end of the spectrum who grew up you know in, 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 as digital natives mm -hmm. in, in an mm -hmm. electronic mm -hmm. environment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Paul? Um, the um, I think one of the big advantages and positive aspects I think is that it has allowed me to care for the patient closer and look at looking at the patient and not having to worry and then once things have settled down especially in emergency situations, crisis situations I don't have to worry about charting and it's capturing the whole crisis digitally for us mm -hmm. and you can actually go back and look at that and see what went wrong or what could have been prevented at that time. So I think that is a big positive advantage looking back and seeing what was going on. Um, and then it's similar to paper charting, charting after the fact. You could hit one button and it gives you a timestamp of when that event happened. And then you can go back and put your notes in however, whenever the patient is stable or even after the case is done, you can still go back and put in your notes afterwards. Mm -hmm. So I think there are definitely some advantages in that aspect. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, 
Are there aspects of your anesthesia delivery that require specific concentration on your part due to this method of record keeping? Um, do you forget certain things or are you reminded of certain things, uh, certain aspects of the care as dictated by your chart? Um, in the paper chart, mm -hmm. no. You know, I don't find that. Uh, you know, I know it has to be charted and the, the, the forcing functions that are there for me are that there are, a, a, on any paper chart, there are boxes that need to, to be filled and completed mm -hmm. and, and you know, that directs my attention into those different areas. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that would be about it with the, uh, the paper chart. Mm -hmm. Good. Paul? I'll repeat the question. Uh, I sure will. Are there aspects of anesthesia delivery that require specific concentration on your part? Um, do you forget in certain things or are you reminded of certain things, basically dictated by your method of record keeping? I don't think anything has uh, dictated, other than the fact that in my setup, I make sure that the computer is on, the computer is functioning, uh, you have a connection that you need to have. Um, the, um, the, what was the last part of the question? Um, last part, are, they, are you reminded of certain things? I think um, the, the, the system does have reminders that are set up into it mm -hmm. for you to make sure that certain boxes are filled. Otherwise, it will not let you close the chart. Um, highlighted things on the chart showing, you know, that this needs to be done before you close the chart. Mm -hmm. Those are uh, some of the things that make sure that certain things are checked off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Very good. Um, if you could advise the beginning practitioner about the use of um, the form of record keeping that you're most familiar with, um, what would you tell them? Um, to, I would advise them to make sure that they are accurate, mm -hmm. that their writing is legible, mm -hmm. um, and that they're honest in, in, in their uh, appraisal. And uh, again, I, I tend to make a lot of use of comments, mm -hmm. and so I advise them to you know, add in any type of narrative comments wherever there's a question rela related to care. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, so for paper charting, that's what I would do. Mm -hmm. Paul, for computer I, I can agree you. with you know, mm -hmm. what you say about paper charting. Um, with the electronic medical records, um, I'm losing track of the question. I'm sorry. Again. Uh, if you had to advise the beginning practitioner oh. about certain aspects of your phone um, record. <coughs> with electronic medical records, I find that as you use it, it becomes second nature. It's like going, starting to write, learning how to write. Mm -hmm. It takes time to learn how to do it, do it efficiently. But then once you've done it for a while, mm -hmm. it's, you're lost without it mm -hmm. after a while. Well, Paul, that leads into our, my, my next question here. Given the benefit of your experience, uh, do you believe that there's a particular learning curve for practitioners who transition from uh, a manual charting system to a computerized charting method? Uh, there's definitely a learning curve. Um, you know, after, I'd say, a month or two, somebody should be pretty comfortable mm -hmm. using it. Um, I know we've had uh, people who have been practicing for 20, 30 years and have come in and used automated charting they like it and people that are just coming into school and learning how to use it then they go somewhere else and they are not using it they're using manual charting it's different but so there's a learning curve i don't necessarily think it takes any longer necessarily when you're learning how to chart and record anesthesia events and stuff like that mm -hmm. um, sometimes i think there are events that pop up um, on the automated record that you may have not necessarily put on, on a manual record, mm -hmm. and that may trigger you to do it. But the learning curve, I think, is just as time goes on, you get more efficient with mm -hmm. it, and it allows you to focus more time with your, with your patient. Mm -hmm. Mike, what are your thoughts on that learning curve? Um, I, I couldn't agree more with, with Paul, and that's one of my biggest criticisms, is that you know, until there is a standardized electronic anesthesia record, standardized for everybody, so that I could walk into your hospital and you can walk into mine. Because right now, if you came into my mm -hmm. hospital, you know, if you came into my hospital, if Paul came in and had to give care, and I handed him a paper record, he could give care. If he had to try to figure out our electronic charting system, you know, he would not be able to give care, or his, he would be having to spend, I believe, an inordinate amount of attention onto the electronic charting device itself. Mm -hmm. And that's because, you know, a lot of times I come up with questions where I want to add a comment. Well, it's not just simple. You have to find out which menu will allow you to get to the area where you need to get to get what comment. Mm -hmm. 
a lot of times I want to find out something that happened back in the chart. Well, then I've got to figure out which menu to get back to that specific area. Whereas opposed to the paper chart, I write the comment. I want to see the, 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 the thing that happened in the past. I look back and it's right there on the piece of paper. I don't have to go through screens and menus to do so. And, so, and that's my biggest thing, is that the time that people are, are, are not facing the patient and are facing this electronic chart, uh, in, in my experience, detracts. Perhaps, as Paul said, if we go to a standardized method that is embraced by everyone across the country and everyone is trained in, in, in this method, then many of the limitations I spoke about would go away. Uh -huh. Great. Well, I want to thank you, gentlemen. That's all, that's all the questions I have, and I really appreciate your time. Hey, thank you. Thank you. While there are benefits to the adoption of computerized record-keeping systems, researchers should examine differences in the connectedness of practitioners to the patient.